Hi and welcome to Old School Blues Guitar. It is time for the Classic Licks Series lesson for May and June 2016. This month I've got a, a very unusual guitar player to look at. His name is Lightning Slim. And to be honest with you, I had not listened to a whole lot of Lightning Slim and didn't really know much about him until I heard a couple songs on YouTube and I got interested in him. And he recorded on Excello Records, kind of that swamp blues with the uh, same record or uh, label that produced Slim Harpo and uh, Lazy Lester and some others. And Lightning Slim, I'm pretty sure some of you guys who are really into this history stuff, you can tell me this was related to Lightning Hopkins. And their guitar styles are very, very similar. And the problem with Lightning Slim is that he's even more unpredictable as far as chord changes and timing than Lightning Hopkins was, in my opinion. And another issue with Lightning Slim's playing is I'm not sure whether he's playing a thumb bass and accompanying himself playing two parts on the guitar at once or if he's just playing one part. So I'm going to try to show you how you could do it both ways. And some of you who've already gotten into the finger style stuff, Lightning Hopkins stuff, will easily make the transition. Uh, to do a, a lesson on his playing, I listened to a ton of Lightning Slim stuff. And to be honest with you, there's really only a few ideas that he used over and over again with some variations. And so to get started, what I'm going to do is just show you a typical, what I call a typical Lightning Slim song that he would back himself up with her progression or whatever you want to call it. The way that he would back himself up when he was singing a song. And there's some specific songs that he did that I'll try to mention as I go through this and include in the tab. But really, what I show you here is kind of what he did on most of his songs. Now he had some variations, we're going to go through those, but a lot of his songs are just in what I call the E, like a slow blues in E. Let me play it, what I call a typical lightning slim backing here, and then we'll, we'll break it down. so forth. And the thing with Lightning Slim as I listen to his songs is like just totally unpredictable as far as when he's going to change chords, how long he's going to stay on the four or on the one or go to the five. It's really, you can't imitate it. I mean, he's, he's I think harder to follow than any other guitar player I've ever listened to. Maybe there's guys that are worse than that. Lightning Hopkins was always notorious for changing chords and all that whenever he felt like it, but I, I feel like I can follow him better than Lightning Slim. <laughs> so the, the basic idea here, the chords, there's three chords you need for the Lightning Slim stuff. One is an E, first position E, and I'm playing it with two fingers. I've got my first finger on the first fret of the third string, and then my second finger is getting both the fourth and fifth strings at the second fret. And that frees up my pinky and my ring finger to do all kinds of things. Then I've got an A7th shape where I've got my first finger flattened out across the second fret from the fourth string to the first string. Then my ring finger is on the third fret of the first string. And open A, open fifth string is my bass. Open sixth is my bass for the, for the E chord. Then the B7th shape. This one, I've got my first finger on the first fret of the fourth string, my second finger on the second fret of the fifth string, my ring finger on the second fret of the third string, and my pinky on the second fret of the first string. And those are the three chords that you need. Now the basic, what I call light and slim lick, goes something like this. is really the, the core of everything he does on these slow blues songs. So what I don't know 
is as he's playing the chords and as he's playing the licks, is he playing the thumb bass? So if I put my pick down for a second, is he doing this? And keeping that steady thumb going and picking with his, maybe his first finger. with you when I listen to the recordings I really don't hear the steady bass which makes me think that he was just playing with a with a pick or maybe with a stom or not worried about keeping the bass going I can't tell so to be honest with you you can play it either way if you're doing a lightning slim or slow blues and E like a Jimmy Rogers type thing or you know anybody else lightning Hopkins you can include the bass or not or you can throw the bass in every now and then. So what I'm hearing is on this first lick, open sixth string, and then it sounds like an open first and second string. Leading into this, and that is a basic blues lick in E, where I've got my first finger on the second fret of the second string, my second finger on the third fret of the third string, and then I'm sliding picking the third string and then sliding and then upstroking all the th first three strings. Now you can do it like that or you can slide twice. When I listen to Lightning Slim I hear sometimes where he doesn't do the slide, he just does this. Or keeps that going. It, it, again, he's really hard to predict. The simplest way to do it would be one, two, three, one, two, three, like that. And then, to get back into the one, it sounds to me like he's going to the second fret of the third string, and then hammering on the first fret of the third string, and then winding up on the E, which is at the second fret of the fourth string. So the whole lick... Then there's where you could throw in that open sixth string. So this basic lightning slim lick. Whoops, let me do that again. And then a lot of times he'll just go to an E seventh shape. And the, the rhythm that he'll use varies from song to song. But I'm putting my pinky on the third fret of the second string. Throwing in the bass whenever I can in tune. So over the one, when you're doing the lightning and slim thing, most of the time you're doing this. And I'll show you some variations on that in a minute, but that's like the simplest thing. Then when he goes to the full four, which is an A seventh, I hear this slide from the sounds from about the second fret of the sixth string to the fourth fret and then open fifth to lead into the A seventh chord. So you get this. Now when he plays the A seventh, sometimes he plays the whole chord. single string thing. So he does this. That. So what I'm doing is bending up just a little bit on the third fret of the first string and open. Fret of the second string, open first again, and then twice, open. So the whole lick over the A7, and then when he does it the second time, he's still over the four. A lot of times, from what I've listened to, he doesn't do it again, instead, he just plays the chord.
go back to the one, it sounds like he's just hitting the open sixth string or maybe that chord. So it's like this. And then the open second and first string. And then to get to the five, you can kind of roll into it. Open fifth string, one, two. And just stay on the on that B seventh chord. Now what I what I hear when I study this playing is a lot of times he won't go five to four to one. He'll just stay on the five and then back to the one. So we'll do this. seventh and that's your basic real basic kind of lightning slim idea so if you're playing a slow blues and in E you can do this let me go over this one more time for this part of the lesson and then in the second part of the lesson I'm going to show you some variations over each of those three parts again I'm no expert on this guy this is me listening to the recordings trying to figure them out for myself and I'm just sharing you know what I think is going on here and hopefully I'm accurate on some of it. And either way, there's some cool ideas here that you can maybe use. This whole progression, if you're ever playing a slow blues in E, you've got a harmonica player or somebody else, this is a great way to back them up. The old lightning slim, lightning Hopkins type thing. So let me play that whole thing through one more time, and then we'll, we'll do some variations. <laughs> this lesson I will come back here with part two and we'll look at some variations if you have any questions comments on this part make sure to let me know and I'll do my best to answer your questions <laughs>